Okay, we're going to get ready to start. So this week, I took a practice where we started in Shavasana, and she left us there for entirely way too long for my taste, but it was a wonderful way to start. So that's how we're going to start today. So I want you to turn around, and you're going to lie down on your backs. Um, please make sure, though, when you do lie down, you've got a strap somewhere close by your head in case if you need it. And since we are starting in Shavasana, I want you to set yourself up as though you were literally taking Shavasana. So that means that if you normally cover yourself with a blanket in Shavasana, you do that. If you normally take Supta Baddha Kanasana, you do that. But you are going to allow yourself to set yourself up for having dessert before we've even had the main course. <laughs> And as you find yourself falling into this shape, I want you to really take the first few moments to just settle as you would normally. So if you need to fidget around so the buttocks flesh is moving towards your feet, you do that. If you need to widen the shoulder blades a little bit, you do that. If you need to press a little bit into the head and maybe rock it a little bit, you do that. And then the invitation from here is to just allow yourself to come into that still, quiet place. And I'm going to stop talking at this point and leave you with yourself for just a few moments, just a few breaths. Good morning, Robin. We are starting in Shavasana to start. Begin to return your awareness to your breath. As you come back to your breath, just notice what you notice. Notice some of the energy that might have built up during that practice. Notice what's coming over you now. It's very interesting. I think for a lot of us, what I found about starting this way was that it allowed me to become aware of my actual starting point the tension, the anxieties, the thoughts, the feelings, the worries, all the stuff. And so we're going to 
use that awareness, that information that we might have just gleaned, and then check back in at the end of the practice and see what may have shifted. As you're ready, we'll start to bend both of our knees and plant the soles of the feet on the floor. From here, draw your right knee into your chest. You're good. Bring your knee to your chest and then bring the strap across the ball of your right foot. From here, you'll send your right foot straight up towards the sky. And today we're gonna work with finding a 90 degree angle. So you're gonna draw your thigh back so it's perpendicular to your spine. And then you're gonna pull down with the strap across the ball of your foot and send the heel up and the ball of the foot up. And then if you're happy as a clam there, you might stay there or you might extend the opposite leg long beneath you. Now, if you have extended that left leg long, I want you to push down through the left heel, push down through the left calf, push down through the left thigh. And then everyone, I want you to see if you can draw your outer right hip away from you even more. So it comes away from your shoulder and in towards your inner left thigh. Yeah. So we're just going to pause and we're going to breathe here for about another minute or so. The next action I want you to imagine is that you are trying to push your right thigh away from you as you pull the big toes and the fourth and fifth toes down. And we're just going to pause and we're going to breathe and we're going to notice what we noticed here. Sense how this is going, how this is giving us something to direct our mind to, something to direct our breath and our awareness to. Fantastic. The end of your next exhalation, let's draw both ends of the strap into your left hand. Draw your right thumb to your right hip and actively push your right hip away from you and then cross the right leg a few inches over to the left. Some of you will stay there actively pushing your right hand into your right thigh. Some of you might open your right arm to the right palm faces down and just take a few moments to breathe there as we've got this gentle twist happening here. Notice if there's tension in your face and just pause and breathe. Fantastic. On your next in breath, let's go ahead and come back up through center. As you exhale, bend the knee into your chest, release the strap and then plant the right foot next to the left. Notice what you notice between the sides. And just take a moment to be still, really still. Great. And then we'll try all that on the other side. So go ahead and draw your left knee into your chest. Draw the strap across the ball of your left foot. And then send the left foot up towards the sky. And then again, same thing that we did before. So take the opportunity to flex through that foot. Push up through your heel, and then you're going to draw your outer left hip away from your left shoulder. Some of you will stay there. Some of you might kick or extend your right leg long beneath you. And then notice if you can drop both shoulders evenly. And you just pause and you breathe. And then if that right leg is long and straight, you're pushing down through the heel, through the calf, through the back of the thigh. And then you're noticing if you can release any unnecessary tension around your shoulders, around your neck. Fantastic. The end of your next exhalation. Let's go ahead and bring both ends of the strap into your right hand. Draw your left thumb to your left hip. Push your left hip away from you and then cross the body over a few inches to the right. And then you're just pausing and breathing and some of you will stay there. Some of you will extend the left arm to the left. You'll turn the palm to face the floor and just notice what that's doing in the shoulder joint. And you just pause and you breathe and the outer left hip is actively moving away from your left shoulder. Nice work. On your next inhalation, gently come back up through center. Bend the knee, release the strap, and take a moment to plant the left foot and then the right foot onto the floor. Great. From here, open the arms out into that T-shape again. Make sure your palms face down for today. Widen your feet a little wider than your hips. 
And then I want you to slowly rock the feet one way. Sorry, the knees one way. And then slowly rock the knees the other way. And you're just noticing what's going on in the shoulders with having the palms turned down. Normally, I have your palms facing up. And you just notice what this feels like. Okay. Then we'll gently come to a still neutral spot. Fantastic. Walk your feet so they're underneath you, hip distance apart. And then this is going to sound weird, but I want you to push through your feet and lift your hips about two to three inches up and away from the floor. And then imagining I've put a hula hoop on you, I want you to create five circles to the right with your hips. So your hips are going to the right five times. And you're noticing that this is awkward as all get out. And you're just noticing what that feels like. And after you've taken five circles to the left, you'll come to stillness. You'll lower your pelvis back down. You'll notice what that may have done in the low back. You'll take two breaths. And then as you're ready, you'll inhale, you'll lift your hips two to three inches and you'll reverse your circle. So if we went to the right the first time, now we're going to the left and you're trying to make these as smooth as possible. How smooth can you make these circles? Oh yeah, so awkward. Fantastic. And after you've taken about five, you'll go ahead and lower your pelvis back down. Bring your hands alongside your hips and take a moment to pause and take a moment to breathe. From here, turn your palms to face up. Draw the shoulder blades underneath you and then inhale, press through the feet, lift the hips up. And then exhale, roll down through the spine, bring the hips back down and you'll do four more of those. And you're just noticing what it feels like now. Does it feel easier to lift through the hips? Does your bridge surprisingly feel a little higher than you might ordinarily expect it to be this early into practice? How's the breath doing? Fantastic. And then after your fifth and final bridge up and down, you'll go ahead and lower your pelvis down. You'll take a moment to pause and you'll take a moment to breathe. Fantastic. All right, guys, extend your right arm alongside your ears. Roll over onto your right side and continue to make your way onto your abdomen. When we find ourselves on our abdomen, we're gonna extend our arms out into a T-shape once again. Go ahead and look to your right hand. Slide your right hand a few inches to the right, then look towards your left hand. Plant your left hand underneath your left shoulder. Lift up through your left leg and start to roll towards your right. So your left leg may stay straight. You may bend your left knee. You may put the left foot on the floor, but you'll take a moment to pause and you'll breathe there. And you're actively pushing down into that left hand to rotate the chest towards the left and then maybe up towards the sky. And you're just pausing and you're breathing. Fantastic. And then as you're ready, you'll gently release that and inhale, come back onto your stomach. Extend the arms out into the T shape again. Look to the left, slide your left hand a little bit to the left, and then look back to the right, step the right hand underneath the right shoulder, lift the right leg, and start to roll towards the left. You might keep the right leg straight, you might bend the right knee, but you'll just take a few moments to pause, and you'll take a moment to breathe, and you'll just experience this for you right here, right now. Nice work. And then as you're ready, you'll gently release. Inhale, come back onto your abdomen. Let's go ahead and separate our feet probably to the outer edges of your mat. They're at least outer hip distance apart. And then you're going to put your hands underneath your shoulders. Start to push down through your hands. Look at your belly button and you're going to lift just a little bit up. It might come up pretty high considering that I said a little bit, but you're just pushing down and you're coming to where it's comfortable. And then you'll lower all the way down. And if your feet are outer hip distance or outer mat distance apart, make sure your toes are still pointing in. And then you're going to take that two more times. There you go. And you're just pushing down through the arms, lifting as high up as you wish. And then exhaling, lowering down. Last time, looking at your belly button, pushing down through your hands. Coming as high as feels comfortable for you. 
me out some and exhale down. Fantastic. From here, go ahead and walk your legs together. Push down through your hands, scoop the belly, come up to hands and knees, and then press yourself back to a child's pose position. From here, the hands will walk forward and you'll just let the head descend towards the floor and you might stay here happy and comfortable. You might decide to lift the heels of the hands away from the floor and push down and forward, lifting up through the inner armpits, but you've got two more breath cycles here. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and inhale and come forward onto hands and knees. If you need to, put that blanket underneath your knees to provide a bit of padding. We're not doing a lot of knee-based stuff, but sometimes it just feels good for the shins. Fantastic. From here, make sure hands are directly underneath your shoulders. Press flat through the palms and inhale, lower the belly, lift the tail, lift the gaze. And then exhale, round through your spine, cat pose. And you've got four more of those, inhaling into your cow shape, exhaling into your cat shape. Yep, and you're just connecting in. What does it feel like to be in the body? What does it feel like to be with the breath? Fantastic. This next time, you come forward into your cow shape. You'll exhale then into a neutral tabletop position. So you might choose to do this differently, but you're gonna take your hands and walk them so your fingers are pointing slightly inward. It's not a big one, it's super slight. And you might notice that once we do this next thing, you have to adjust it for you, but you'll curl both sets of toes under and then lift yourself up to a downward facing dog. And if that feels so wonky in your shoulders, come down and readjust your hands. But you'll take three breath cycles here and you'll just notice what this feels like to keep the knees super bent, to lift your hips up and back. And then imagine for some odd reason, you then start to send your thigh bones back, your heels towards the floor and you pause and you breathe and you pause and you breathe. Fantastic. All right, let's go ahead and inhale, lower your knees down to the mat, readjust your hands to the normal orientation for you if that feels better. And then exhale back to downward facing dog. Great, fantastic. Let's go ahead and move on. On your next in-breath, reach your right leg up and back. As you exhale, draw your right knee to your nose, plant your right foot between your hands, and lower your back knee to the mat or floor. From here, you might bring your hands to your blocks and shift your back leg back. Shift your back leg back. Shift your hips back to straighten your front leg long. So Ardha Hanumanasana. And then we'll just take a moment to pause here. First thing we want to do is make sure the sole of the right foot is on the floor. And notice how that feels. And that will feel odd. So you might need to turn your blocks up a bit. And then some of you will peel the whole sole of the right foot up and away from the floor. And again, you're just taking a moment to pause and breathe. You're pulling all five toes up towards the kneecap. You're pulling the kneecap up towards the hip. Some of you will stay right here happy as a clam. Some of you will slide your right foot back just an inch. Then you'll externally rotate the whole right thigh. Oh, that's fun. And you're going to breathe. And if you're making these crazy Jedi eye things or anything like that you want to notice if you can let go of that some of you are going to stay right there and again our heart is coming forward our butt is going back just like when we were lying on our backs some of us might walk both of our hands and or blocks to the outside edge of our right leg now if you do that you're pulling the outer left hip back a lot your heart is coming forward a lot your butt is going back a lot and then we're breathing for dear life because this is probably intense on our hamstrings or it bands and so we're breathing we're breathing we're breathing, fantastic. All right, next in breath, let's go ahead and come back through center. Shift your weight forward, plant the whole sole of the right foot on the floor, tuck the back toes under, straighten the back leg long. Now you might wanna lower the block underneath the left hand or take it away completely. Bring your right hand to the outside edge of your right thigh. If you need to wiggle walk your right foot slightly to the right, do that for space. Now inhale, reach your heart forward, scoop the belly, and then you're gonna push right hand against right thigh and rotate towards the right. Keep squeezing your outer left hip in. Keep hugging your outer right hip in. Some of you will stay right there breathing happy as a clam. Some of you will reach your right arm up towards the sky. 
Fantastic. Now this is gonna sound odd, but I want you guys to squeeze your shoulder blades on your back. And then I want you to imagine you could stack your collarbones on top of each other. Oh, what does that do? And then you just pause and you breathe. Some of you will stay right here. Some of you will turn your right thumb to face the back of the mat and then bring the back of your right hand to your left hip, but the low back area. And then some of you will stay there. Some of you will drop your left ear to touch your left shoulder. And then again, we're breathing and we're pausing. And we're noticing if we're making Jedi death stares with our face or if we're grimacing our mouth. Fantastic. On your next in-breath, reach that right arm up. As you exhale, unwind the hand. Bring the hand to frame the front foot. Plant both palms on the mat and step yourself back to a downward facing dog. And then just take a moment to pause and take a moment to breathe. And you just notice what this feels like as you're here. How's the breath? How's the body? How are you? We spend a lot of time in movement that we are not always checking in with what we want, what we need, what's true for us. But the wonderful thing about our asana, lift up for me, please, is that it gives us the opportunity to check in moment by moment, breath by breath. Yeah, that's looking good. All right, let's go ahead and try the other side. Inhale, sweep your left leg up and back. As you exhale, left knee to nose. Carefully plant that foot between your hands and then lower your right knee down to the mat or blanket. From here, hands will come to blocks. Shift your weight back and straighten your front leg long. And we'll first start by seeing what it feels like if the sole of the left foot is on the floor. That might not feel like so much fun across the top of your left shin. Some of you will then peel the sole of your left foot up and away from the floor. So toes are pulling back towards your knee. Your kneecap is pulling up towards your left hip. And then I want you to send your heart forward, your butt back, and your head is in alignment with that long vertebral spine. Fantastic. Some of you are gonna stay right here and be happy as a clam. Some of you are gonna suck your left heel back just an inch and then externally rotate the whole thigh. Oh, buddy, man. Yeah, and that's intense, and are we breathing? Maybe not. See if we can breathe. Some of you will stay right there happy as a clam. Some of you will walk your blocks to the outside edge of your left foot, and if you're doing that, you're still hugging your outer right hip back. Yep, you're pushing down onto your left heel. Your heart is reaching forward. Your bum is sticking back, and you're pausing, and you're breathing. Yeah, nice job, guys. All right, on your next in-breath, hands come back to frame the front foot. Shift your weight forward, plant the whole sole of your left foot on the floor, tuck the back toes under, straighten the back leg long. Now you may need to lower the block underneath your right hand. And then we're gonna bring our left hand to the outside edge of our left thigh. If you need to, wiggle walk your left foot slightly to the left, then push down through your hand, push down through both feet, push your left hand into your left thigh, your left thigh into your left hand, and rotate your rib cage towards the left. You might stay there happy as a clam. You might extend up through your top arm. Now, once you have done that, can you first squeeze the shoulder blades together on your back and imagine that your heart is leaning back into this strength of your shoulders. Yeah. And then notice how that allows you to now better stack your collarbones on top of each other. Yeah. Some of you will stay right there. Some of you will turn the left thumb to face the back and draw the left back hand to the right low back. And then maybe you'll stay there. Maybe you drop the right ear towards the right shoulder to find the neck stretch on the left side. And you pause and you breathe. You pause and you breathe. Next in breath, left arm comes back up. As you exhale, frame the front foot. Plant both palms and step yourself back to a downward facing dog. Auto Mukha Svanasana. Now we'll just take three breaths here and you notice, how does the right side feel? How does the left side feel? How's the breath feeling? How's the body feeling? How are you feeling? Fantastic. Let's go ahead and inhale, come forward into plank pose, fallen kasana. As you exhale, stay here, push the flat palms into the floor. Lift up through the lowest part of your low belly. Yep. Lengthen your tailbone back and then lightly hug your outer hips in. Fantastic. We'll breathe for three. We got it for two. We've got it for one. On your next exhale, you'll shift your weight forward and lower all the way down to the floor. Fantastic. From here, extend back through both of your feet. Sweep your arms alongside your hips. Fantastic. 
Okay, now first thing you'll do is draw your shoulders up towards your ears, draw the shoulder blades onto your back, reach your sternum and heart forward and notice if that lifts your head. Press your pubic bone down and then let your tailbone do what it does. And as you're ready, you'll inhale, lift up through the legs. You'll lift a little higher through the chest. You might even lift up through the arms and we'll breathe for three. Press the pubic bone down for two, hug the shoulder blades together for one. Next exhale, lower all the way down. Fantastic. Plant your hands alongside your lowest ribs. Curl your toes under. Now, before you go anywhere, I want you to scoop the low belly first. Scoop the low belly first. And then when you're ready, you'll push up either through hands and knees or plank. Ha ha, yeah. And then exhale to downward facing dog. Nice job. Three steady breaths. And you just notice what this feels like. Notice what it feels like. How are you doing? How are you breathing? Lift up. Yep, fantastic. As you're ready, you'll inhale, come to the balls of your feet. As you exhale, bend the knees, empty the belly, step or float top of space. When you get to the top of your space, separate your feet about hip distance apart. You might choose to grab opposite elbow. You might choose to grab the back of the skull. You might have your hands on the floor or the blocks, but you've got about four to five breath cycles here. And I want you to just notice how you can allow yourself to be present and alert, even though there's a little bit more going on here than maybe what was going on in Shavasana. I think I'm finally starting to understand why teachers say Shavasana is the hardest pose, because to really be present and still is kind of hard at times. So just allow yourself to notice what's happening here. And then as you're ready, you'll gently release hands to the floor. From here, let's slide our hands up our shins or onto our blocks. Inhale, heart and sternum lift, halfway lift. We're going to pause here. I want you to shift your weight forward a little bit so it feels like you're over the precipice of a cliff. Bend your knees if you need to so that your low belly drops like the cow. Your shoulder blades come together on the back. Yeah, fantastic. Now, as you're ready, you're going to exhale and bend your knees and see if you can touch your fingers to the blocks or floors underneath you. You'll take a breath in here, and then as you exhale, you're going to straighten your legs. Yep, and then inhale, bend your knees. Exhale, straighten the legs. Two more, just like that. Inhale, bend the knees. Exhale, straighten the legs. Last one, inhale, bend the knees. Exhale, straighten the legs. Awesome. Next in breath, inhale, bend your knees. Now plant your palms completely. Slide your right foot back, low lunge. Slide your left foot back, low lunge. You're in plank now. Ha ha, isn't that fun trickery? Next in breath, shift your weight forward as you exhale lower through Chakaranga Dandasana. Inhale to your cobra or up dog. And then you'll exhale back to downward facing dog. And you just pause and you breathe and you notice what you notice. How's the breath? How's the body? How are you? We have so many moments where we can always check in. And yet, I don't know if we always are able to notice what a gift they are. It seems like we check in the most when something seems in crisis or awry. But what if we allowed ourselves to check in when things are going super fantabulous and well as well? All right, let's move on. Inhale, sweep your left leg up and back. As you exhale, left knee to nose, lift the pelvis, lower the left foot to the floor. Nice. Now from here, spin your back foot to the floor, make sure it's a long stance, and inhale up to Virabhadrasana 2, Warrior 2. Okay, so for today, we're going to try this back heel front arch alignment, or sorry, front heel back arch alignment. So you look down at your legs and see if you need to wiggle walk your left foot to the left. And then notice if you can take your right thigh back just a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Now in this very awkward way, I want you to externally rotate your left leg. So it's almost like your left leg's going back, down, and under. And then at the same time, your front leg is going front, down, and back. So the two legs are doing something different. And you'll notice that the wider your legs are, for some reason, the easier it makes it to do those two actions. Great. Now you're going to push down through both feet, hug both feet in, and then go ahead and extend out through both arms. Now keep the external rotation of your front leg 
internal rotation of your back leg. Inhale, reach forward, out and down. And you might lower left hand to block floor or thigh. And then you'll extend out through your right arm. So we'll just breathe here for three. We'll breathe here for two. So left arm alongside left ear, if possible. Yes, we'll breathe here for one. Nice job. Next in breath, return to Virbhadrasana two. Pause. As you're ready, go ahead and straighten your front leg long. Now, pay attention to your right heel. You might spin your right heel out just a little bit so that you can now hinge at your hips, reach out through the left hand, and maybe lower left hand to the floor. And so the same actions are still happening in your leg. Inner rotation of the back leg, outer rotation of the front leg. And then see if you can squeeze shoulder blades on back. Yep. Let the heart lean back into the shoulders, collarbones stack on top. Yeah, fantastic. Next in-breath, return to warrior two. As you exhale, settle here. Re-externally rotate the front leg and internally rotate the back leg. Yep. Inhale, flip your front palm. Reverse your warrior, Viparita Virbhadrasana. And then you bend the front knee. Yep. And you just pause and you breathe. On your next exhale, go ahead and cartwheel both hands down to the mat. Pause in your low lunge, and then step yourself back to a plank pose. You might choose to stay in plank. You might choose to cycle through. You might go back to downward facing dog. You choose what works best for you, but you just pause and you breathe as you do it. Nice. And then when you get back to your downward facing dog or your child pose, you just pause and you breathe. And you notice what sensations are here. Fantastic. And then we'll go ahead and try the other side. Next in breath, sweep your right leg up and back. As you exhale, right knee to nose, pause, lift your pelvis a bit, and then plant the right foot. Fantastic. From here, spin your back foot to the floor and then come up for warrior two. When you are up, we're going to try that front heel back arch alignment. Hmm. Nice. So adjust the feet until it feels like you've got that going on. The only benefit to really doing that is it just gives you the ability to actually work the legs better. So you'll then externally rotate your front leg. So it's going back behind you, down to the floor, and then coming forward. And then your back leg is going forward. It's going down, and then it's going back. And then once you've got that, you're going to push down through both feet, hug them in, and then check in with the arms, making sure both right arm and left arm are equally active. Next in-breath, reach out through your right arm. Maybe lower right forearm to top of thigh, hand to block or floor, and then you'll extend out through your left arm. And then you just pause and you breathe and you soften and you breathe. And you just notice how this is working. Yeah, we're all doing great. Nice job. On your next in-breath, return to Virbhadrasana two. Fantastic, go ahead and straighten your front leg long. Now notice if you wanna spin your back heel back just a little bit more. Yep, and then reach forward out and down through your right hand, lowering right hand to block shin or floor. And we'll notice how that feels on this side. And you just pause and you just breathe. And you wanna see if you can still externally rotate your front leg, if you can internally rotate your back leg, if you can hug your shoulder blades together on the back and lean the heart into the shoulders. Nice. On your next in-breath, return to warrior two. As you exhale, bend into the front knee a little bit more, and then inhale, reverse your warrior. And you just pause and you just breathe. Externally rotating front leg. Yeah. Next in-breath, return to warrior two. And then as you exhale, cartwheel the hands down to the mat, pivot to the ball of the back foot, step back to plank. Either stay there or cycle through an up dog or cobra or just make your way back to downward facing dog. And you just pause and you breathe and you notice what you notice. All right. All right. From down dog, let's go all forward into plank. 
if I'll come forward into plank, pause here, then go ahead and lower it all the way down to the mat. Step your forearms to the mat and come up for Sphinx pose. Some of you will stay right here and you'll just push down into your hands. You'll pull your hands back, you'll reach your heart forward, you'll press the tops of the feet down. You will stay here and you'll just explore what it feels like to drop your left shoulder to your left ear and maybe open your mouth a few times and breathe here, actively pulling down and back with that right hand. And then you'll come back up through center and then we'll go over to the other side. So right ear to the right shoulder, push down through your left hand, pull it back isometrically, open and close your mouth a few times. And you might stay with this. This is option number one. Next inhale, come back to center. Option number two is to take your right hand towards the left wrist, to bend your left knee, reach back with your left hand to grab your left foot with your left hand. Now I want you to push down into your right hand if you're doing this, push down into your right foot, lengthen your tailbone back, and maybe you'll draw your right heel and hip towards each other. If that happens quite easily, you'll be fine there. You'll push your right foot into your right hand, your right hand into, sorry, left hand into left foot, left foot into left hand, tailbone lengthens back, push down through right hand, push down through right foot. Then you'll pause and you'll breathe. Great. Very mindfully, if you've got that, release that. We'll come back through center, both hands parallel, and you just take a moment to pause. How does the right side feel for the left versus the left side? And then we'll try that on the other side. So maybe the left hand comes towards the right hand. You'll bend the right knee. You might reach around with the right hand to grab the right foot. Push down into the left hand. Push down into the left foot. Lengthen your tailbone back. And then you might draw the right heel, the right hip. Right hand pushes into right foot. Right foot pushes into right hand pushes into right foot. Right foot pushes into right hand. Chest lifts up. You pause. You breathe. Nice work. Very mindful, you will release that. Come back into sphinx and then lower all the way down. Last little thing on our bellies. Go ahead and sweep your arms back alongside your hips. Press your pubic bone down. And some of you will just draw the shoulder blades up towards the ears, draw the shoulder blades onto the back and just lift the head. And you might just stay here. Some of you will float the legs up as well. Some of you will float the arms up as well. And you'll breathe for three. Yeah, you'll breathe for two, you'll breathe for one. Exhale, lower all the way down. Nice job. Bring your hands underneath your rib cage. Tuck your toes under. Now I want you to imagine all of this comes from your low belly. So pull your low belly in first, then keep that engaged, push through the hands, come up through modified plank or plank, yep. And then make your way back to downward facing dog. Yeah, three breaths. And you just pause and you breathe. And then we're going to go back to the very thing that we started with at the very beginning of class. So your thighs feel back. And you're noticing what that feels like to send your thighs back and to arch the low back while still keeping armpits and chest lifted. Well, armpits lifted. There we go. <laughs> yes, you are correct, Roberta. Not all the way back to Shavasana, but we'll get there soon. All right, let's move on. Inhale, sweep your right leg up and back. As you exhale, right knee to nose. Gently plant the foot between your hands. Now bring your hands to your blocks. Take your left foot to the left a little bit and spin the left foot down. Now we've got a wide stance. So you might need to widen your right foot to the right a little bit. Bring the fingertips to the tops of the blocks and lift up a little bit higher through the chest. So sole of left foot on the floor, next in breath, sweep your hands back, squeeze the shoulder blades together on your back, and then inhale, bring yourself up to vertical. Fantastic. You might stay here. You might interlace the hands and find a little bit more of a chest stretch, but we're still working on having the rotation happen in the rib cage, finding the length in the front and back of our neck. Yep. And then softening our gaze. You know what it reminded me of, Jenny? It looks like Cookie Monster. And then as you're ready, yeah, you'll go ahead and 
extend the arms out and up and overhead. And you'll just take a moment to pause here in your warrior one and you'll take a moment to breathe. And then notice here, if this is another one of those poses where you wanna spin your back heel out a little bit more. So this time it would go more towards the left and it just allows a little bit more stability, at least in my body and in a rotation. Fantastic. Bring your right hand to your right hip. Next in breath, go ahead and straighten your front leg long. Now push into your back leg a lot until you feel it come up into your top arm. And then on your next exhale, reach forward, out and down and bring your fingers to the block underneath your left hand and then bring your hand to your block underneath your right hand. And I want you to walk both blocks underneath your shoulders. Now, again, externally rotate your front leg. So you're going to keep pushing into that big toe mound like we did in Ardha Hanumanasana, but you're externally rotating the top of the thigh. Yeah, and then press down into the outer edge of the back pinky toe. Great. Now from here, inhale, reach your heart and sternum forward. You might come to the fingertips of your blocks. Some of you will stay right here and hang out as happy as a clam. Some of you will bring your right hand to your right hip. You'll reach your heart and sternum forward. You'll push down into your legs, push down into your left arm, and start to scoop the belly towards the right. From there, notice if you can draw the right ribs back, the left ribs forward, and you might stay there. You might reach the right arm up. But you've got three breath cycles here in your variation, a revolved triangle. And you're just noticing, you're just pausing, and you're breathing. Yeah, fantastic. On your next in-breath, if your hand is up, Lower your hand down to the floor. Now from here, I want you to shift your weight forward just a little bit to peel up the back of the foot. So now you're on the ball of your back foot. Now you're gonna shift your weight back to peel up the sole of your front foot. I do encourage you to turn your blocks to their highest setting, but you do whatever the heck works for you. And again, walk your blocks back underneath your shoulders. Now you're gonna suck that right heel back just an inch flex through that foot and then externally rotate the front leg. So we're going back to what we did at the very, well, not the very beginning, but a little bit earlier. Some of you will stay there. Some of you will again, walk your blocks to the outside edge of your right leg. But again, your heart is reaching forward. Your butt is reaching back and we're breathing into our legs. We're breathing into the sensation. Outer left hip draws back. Nice job guys. All right. Next in breath, let's go ahead and come back to center. Bend the front knee, plant both palms, and step yourself back to plank pose. You might stay there again. You might cycle through. You might make your way back to downward dog. But you just pause, and you just breathe, and you notice what you notice. Nice job, Barbara. Nice job, Robin. Okay, let's try the other side. Inhale, sweep your right leg up and back. As you exhale, draw the right knee towards the nose and then plant the, the foot between the hands. Sorry, left foot. That's fun. Now from here, hands come to your blocks and then spin your right foot down to the mat. Take a moment to pause here. First, make your fingertips light on your blocks and notice how that engages the core and requires it to push down through the legs. From there, you'll inhale, reach the heart forward and sweep your arms back. Draw the shoulder blades onto your back and then inhale, bring your spine up to vertical. Fantastic. You might just stay here, externally rotating your front leg, internally rotating the back leg. You might interlace your hands awkward opposite that interlace behind you. And then just find an opening across your chest and reaching down with one hand towards that back foot. And then we'll pause and we'll breathe. Some of you will stay there. Some of you will release both hands and then we'll all inhale, reach arms up and overhead. And you just pause there for a few breaths. And again, notice if you want to internally rotate that back leg just a little bit more. Yeah. Fantastic. On your next exhale, left hand comes to left hip. Inhale, straighten the left leg long. Keep pulling that left kneecap up. Push down into your right foot. Reach up through your right hand. And then reach forward, out and down, lowering right hand to block underneath shoulder. And then go ahead and lower your left hand to block underneath your shoulder. And you might need to walk those blocks back and you'll pause and you'll breathe there for a moment. And then again, check in with that front leg. Make sure you're pulling the kneecap up and not hyperextending. Great. Some of you will stay right there. 
you might choose to bring your left hand to your left hip. From there, push down into both feet, push down into your right hand, reach your heart and sternum a little bit more forward, and then scoop the low belly on the left side, and you'll start to rotate your rib cage towards the left. And then you might reach your left arm up towards the sky, but you're pausing and you're breathing and you're noticing what you notice, hugging the outer left hip back just a smidge, lifting up through the inner right thigh. Yeah, all right. Very gently release the right hand down. Great, listen closely. You might choose to stay here, but let's pivot to the ball of your back foot and make your back leg parallel. You might step it in just a smidge if that feels better for you. Then peel the sole of your left foot up and away from the floor. Walk the blocks back so they're underneath your shoulders. You might choose to stay right here. You might suck that left heel back just a smidge and then externally rotate the left leg. You might choose to stay there. You might walk the blocks outside of your left leg. And again, your heart is reaching forward. Your butt is and back and you're breathing for dear life as your legs start to talk. Yeah, nice work. One more breath cycle here. On your next in-breath, come back through center, frame the front foot, bend your front knee, plant the palm, step yourself back, downward facing dog. Come forward and cycle through cobra and up dog if you'd like and then we're going to meet in child pose or down dog, whichever one you want to rest in. So you choose. You choose. You choose. You just got three breaths. Three breaths. Three breaths. Nice job, guys. I notice the sensations that are happening right here. Notice the thoughts, notice the feelings. The funny thing is we always have an opportunity to check in. I don't think we should spend our whole lives completely like engaged in inner awareness, but I do think we have more opportunities for the reflection to infiltrate our lives than we often give it credit for. All right, let's all come to hands and knees. And then I want you to lower your forearms to the mat. You can make a number 11 shape or a prayer shape, whatever works for you. Round through your chest a lot, lift up through your inner armpits, curl your toes under, and then start to lift your hips up and back. And you wanna keep lifting up through the inner armpits by pushing, yep, down through the forearms. And you'll stay here for about three to five breaths, as long as it feels comfortable for you. And then you'll come down. Push down more, Jenny. Yeah. Fantastic. Awesome. And since most of us are on our bellies, we're going to slither forward onto our bellies even more. So you're in child pose. So slither forward onto your bellies and then make your way onto your back. And then you just pause. Take a moment to pause. Your knees can be bent, your legs can be straight. It's totally up to you, but just take a moment to pause. And then notice if you made yourself comfortable or if you did not. Let's go ahead and bend both of our knees and plant our feet firmly on the floor. 
Cross your right ankle over the top of your left thigh. Actively flex through that foot. Draw the whole configuration of the legs to your chest. And then you might interlace your hands behind the back of the left thigh, front of your left shin. And you just pause and you breathe. Your feet are active. Notice if you choose to be still, or if a little rocking right to left feels good to you. I read something this week by Marianne Greenspan that I, I found really helpful. She said, letting go is letting be. You know, sometimes I think a lot of us, myself included, try to, you know, say we're going to let go of something by doing all this effort to change something or someone, including ourselves. Sometimes letting go is just letting be, letting it be exactly as it is, however it is. And so as you're in this moment, Notice how much you can just let the sensations be what they are. Let the breath be what it is. Let the body be however it is. And notice that that allows just a little bit more space, softness or grace to naturally come in. At the end of your next exhale, you'll gently release this shape. You'll plant both feet on the floor. You'll take a moment to just let yourself be still. And then we'll gently try the other side. So you'll cross the left ankle over the top of the right thigh. You might thread your hands through the whole of the shape as you draw the whole configuration of the legs to your chest. And then again, maybe you grab the back of the right thigh, the front of the right shin. Check in with your shoulders and see if they're hiked up to the ears or away from the floor. And you don't need to change it. Just let it be for the moment and then allow that let that change of its own accord. Right. And you've got about five more breath cycles here. So if you want to rock, you rock. If you want to be still, you be still. But just allow yourself to um, try to let go of changing it and just let it be however it is. At the end of this exhalation, gently release the configuration of your legs. Walk your feet outside of your hips, let the knees fall in. You can cross your arms around the torso to give yourself a hug. And then just take about three to five slow, steady breaths here. the end of your next exhalation. You'll inhale and open the arms and then exhale and switch whichever arm was on top. And now as we find ourselves here, I want you to check in and see if there's some other aspect of movement that might be calling towards you. You know, maybe a gentle supine twist might feel nice. Maybe a little happy baby. Maybe a bridge or a slight inversion, but you just check in. And then you allow yourself to do that thing. You let the impulse be. And you follow the impulse as best as you can, honoring its guidance and its wisdom. I love that every single one of you did something drastically different. That means you're all listening. Yay! No, really, like you're all listening to whatever it is that you needed. Every one of you did something different. Great. We've got about another minute or so. So go ahead and wrap up whatever you're doing. If you did something asymmetrical, you might want to visit the other side.
And then since we started in Shavasana, you might choose to end in Shavasana as well. You might choose to end in a different shape, including like a seated meditation or Supta Baddha Konasana. But choose something that is both restful as well as supportive. Okay. Great. And as you get into your final shape, I do encourage you to take the first few breaths to really settle into it. So if that means you fidget around a little bit, you fidget around. And then this time I want you to take a big breath in and an audible breath out. Yeah, and do that two more times. Yeah, one last time. Now this time as you fall into your Shavasana, the invitation is to remain as aware as possible and just let things be as they are. So notice the sensations in the body and see if you can allow yourself to breathe with them as they are. Notice any feelings or thoughts that come up and see if you can breathe with them as they are. Now go ahead and I'll leave you with yourself for a few moments. And again, the invitation is every time to just notice what's there. Let it be there and notice what changes.
return your awareness to your breath. As you come back to your breath, take a moment to check in. Notice if there's any part of you longing to linger in this shape. If so, please stay here as long as you'd like. When you are ready, allow small, gentle movement to re-enter into your physical form. Frozen stillness, stay as long as you'd like. Those in movement will slowly start to make your way to one of your sides. From your side, you'll roll your chest more towards the floor. Press into your top hand and draw yourself up to a tall and comfortable seat. When you are vertical, allow yourself to sit well. And then with the gaze still inward or the eyes softly resting on the floor, I want you to notice what it feels like to really align the shoulders over the hips, the ears over the shoulders so that it feels like the back of the neck and the front of the neck are equally long. Notice where your tongue is in your mouth and see if you can allow it to fall heavy in the mouth. You can allow the jaw to be heavy, to be soft. And then notice where you can plant the hands so that the heart, the chest feels open and receptive. And if today it doesn't feel particularly open or receptive, that's okay too. Allow yourself to be where you are. And then you'll take three to five breaths just here on your own. There's nothing to do other than just letting whatever is to be there. So there's this meditation that Bernie Clark teaches often in his yin classes. He calls it the all method. The first is A for allow. The next L is let it be. And then the final L is let it go. So as you continue to breathe on your own, you allow whatever to be there. You let it be there. And then you let it go. And you just be with yourself for a few more breaths on your own. the end of your next exhalation, go ahead and bring your hands to the heart center onto the mudra. Press the palms into each other. Really receive the weight of your thumbs into your chest and then press your chest into your thumbs. Soften your chin to your hands just a bit so the back of the neck feels long and the front of the neck feels long too. 
camp. And then gently exhale all of the breath from your mouth. Take a big breath in. Big breath out. Inhale for OM. Join if you'd like. Draw your thumbs to your third eye. May our thoughts be clear. Draw your thumbs to your lips. May our words be kind. And then draw your thumbs to your heart center. May our hearts be open. The light within me honors and salutes the light within each of you. Namaste.